What's happening guys? Today what we're going to be doing is uh, hooking up this Insignia branded universal rear speaker kit. Uh, I've moved my computer back upstairs onto my ultra wide monitor again just to goof around on it again for a while. I haven't uh, I've been using that TV, that uh, LG Nano IPS TV I got, but this is my LG Nano IPS ultra wide, which I did a video on previously. Um, and I've just like I said, hooked back up to that because the TV was using a lot of power. It's like to be gaming on it constantly. My electric bill went up like 40 bucks a month to, to running that. I'm surprised at how much power it must be using. That and the sound bar I have downstairs is quite a bit more uh, power hungry than this one up here too. So, uh, and I get a better refresh rate on this and it has the better, you know, 144 hertz and G-Sync. Uh, well, it's free sync support, but uh, it's G-Sync compatible. And so what I'm going to try to do, the purpose of today's experiment is supposedly you can take this Insignia kit and hook it up to something like this sound bar, which like I say, this uh, is just a Samsung 2.1 sound bar with a little subwoofer down here. And using optical cable, you can run from your audio source. So my audio source in this case will be my Sound Blaster Omni 5.1, but you could do it with, uh, there's a lot of different, of course, sound cards that support optical audio. As long as they have, I think you need Dolby you know, like a like DTS or um, Dolby Live or whatever version of it you you can support, but I think you have to have you know some version of Dolby support to do the 5.1. And even then, it'll be like depending on the drivers and how well they work in Windows Windows 10. Some sound cards I've tried don't work very well in Windows 10, even though they supposedly support 5.1. Like I have an older USB. Uh, actually, it's sitting on there. I've got like that older 5.1 Creative Lab Sound Blaster X5 card on top there, and as you can see, it's got it. It's got an optical port on it, but uh, I could never get it to do 5.1 Windows 10. It would only do uh, stereo, even with like their using their um, Sound Blaster console or whatever the heck they have in Windows. It's like a I couldn't get it to couldn't get it to work. Uh, the ones that have worked, like I have the Sound Blaster ZX down at the bottom there. I got a Focusrite audio card in the center there that I've used in the past. I've just just been playing. I like playing around with different different components, as you probably well know if you've watched this channel enough times. But right now I'm using the Omni. And uh, partly I got that because when I put, uh, either, whether I use either two GPUs in there, or in this case I've got the Zotac Max Amp with the Anities RGB cooler sitting in front of it, that takes up pretty much all the space you would have for any kind of internal sound card. Uh, I tried using the onboard audio, and it has optical out, and I don't believe I was able to get 5.1 working through that either, and it doesn't sound as good as the Creative Labs cards that I've used. So again, Sound Blaster Omni seems to be pretty good. One issue I've had with it uh, is the PC doesn't like to post while it's connected. I've had that problem in the past with different USB external devices that for some reason when you have them connected, the PC doesn't turn on. So I've actually got it connected to the USB hub on my monitor now, and it seems like that bypasses that problem so just a little note for people who want to use something like this it may or may not cause the problem for you but if your pc doesn't want to post with the usb adapter of this type connected try running it through a hub and maybe it'll solve your problem anyways back to the deal at hand supposedly so these are like a wi-fi transmitter and receiver you can see in the box one one is the transmitter that connects to your audio source and one sits in the back of your room and you connect two speakers to it now it comes with speakers as shown in the box but from my understanding they're kind of blah according to the reviews that i read they're not supposedly bad but like they're not not particularly amazing either so i've got these older bose speakers that i had in my, my closet that i'm going to use instead i don't know what model they are i actually looked on them and it doesn't say anywhere on these particular speakers but they're like bookshelf or or you know stand speakers of some kind i've used them in the past they sound pretty good and i bet i'm certain that they'll be better than what comes in the box with these uh, that said, if anybody does want me to test the ones that came with it, I can do that in the future if, if somebody wants to get my personal opinion on how they sound. But everything that I read on like Best Buy's website and, some, and Amazon said they have sort of a kind of a tinny sound to them and don't do a very good job. So that said, I'm going to open up the box here. We'll see everything that comes with it and then I will get it set up. I'm just going to put it in the back of the room. Uh, that TV won't be there much longer. I'm going to mount that on my, I'll be doing a different video tomorrow. I'm going to wall mount that in my kitchen. But uh, I'm going to find some places to put the speakers, probably one back there on the windowsill and one, uh, I'll probably move that chair back there and just have it set in the chair for now just to add back channel audio. But I'll be back in a minute here when I get this box opened up and we can see what comes with it. One sec. All right, so we've got the box open here. We've got our manual that shows you how to set it up. It should be pretty straightforward, but in case it isn't, this will show you kind of how 
go through it. I already Googled this ahead of time to verify how to set everything up, so I shouldn't need to look at the instructions, but if I do, I do. Uh, it comes with a pair of optical cables. One, again, is to run from your audio source. Like, again, in my case, this is the PC, but if you were using, like, a Blu-ray player uh, or anything else you can think of that has optical out and you want to run it to this, then that would be what you would use to do that. And then the other one runs from the optical out on the tra the transmitter device whichever one is which, I think it's this one right here, should have an optical in and an optical out. So then you run from the optical out on this to your sound bar or whatever you re your receiver, whatever you're going to run it to. But like I say, so it comes with the two optical cables. I already have plenty of them laying around. I'm not even going to bother to open these because I have my other ones up here. But uh, if I didn't, like I say, it's kind enough of them to include some. Uh, we've got the two speakers, as I mentioned, one on each end. We've got the receiver and transmitters whichever one is which. There's two AC adapters, one for each of the transmitter and the receiver, so you can plug them in. They don't use batteries, which if they used batteries, then that, I probably wouldn't have done this. That'd be crappy. We've got, looks like two RCA, two like headphone jack, auxiliary style connector here. Uh, this is auxiliary cable, like again, like your headphone style, you know, type, type connector, auxiliary cable. Uh, I think that's, what is it, a 3.5 inch jack? And comes with speaker cables. I believe these are 10 feet a piece, according to what I read on the site. So you get two of those, one for each speaker, of course. So I shouldn't need to uh, use any of my older janky cable on there. I've got what came with it. This is another of the same adapters. So that looks to be about what we get in the box. Like I said, we get the two powers, receiver transmitter, two speakers, some auxiliary to RCA connections, two optical cables, Two speaker wire sets and like I say so next thing up is to connect one of these up by the PC run the Omni optical out to this and then run uh, to the input on this and then from the output on this I run that to my sound bar and then the other one will go in the back of the room which I'll connect the two Bose speakers to and power it up in the back I've got an outlet back there and then I can set up the speakers and we can see if it works I'm kind of curious uh, if it'll work well within a Windows environment versus like if you do a, over a Blu-ray player, um, you know, like I say, maybe the 5.1 in Windows, I want to see if I can like individually tell it to send a, a sound, you know, like a test tone to like an individual audio channel and have it do like just back left and actually have it work as opposed to it, like cloning audio or doing anything weird. We'll have to see how Windows reads this device, but hopefully it should work. I did, like I say, I read some reviews and some other people's uh, walkthroughs on it and it sounded like they were using it Actually, I think the one I saw was with a console. It was with an Xbox, so I don't know, again, about PC. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, I can always use it downstairs with my soundbar down there. I have a Dolby Atmos soundbar. Uh, I didn't do a video on it because it, I don't really know how well that would translate to, to you know, YouTube. Uh, here comes Toothless to come check out the box. But um, the, the, the problem with this is being over optical, it doesn't support Atmos, so I could... Yeah, I could put these in my living room and put them in the you know the back of the room and then have surround sound versus like the virtualized surround sound that Atmos provides. But again, it would not be capable of utilizing Atmos over the optical cables. So anyways, uh, all that said, I'll be back in a minute here once I get everything unpacked uh, and hook everything up. I'll show you guys how the connections are all set up and then we'll test it and see if I can send it, like I say, individual signals to the back left or the back right channels and make sure everything sounds correct. And then we'll try like a game like Red Dead Redemption 2 or something that actually supports surround sound to see if everything's working. So I'll be right back. So I've got this connected at the front, and I set up the speakers in the back. So you can see there's an optical in, optical out, power's connected to it. I run it, uh, the optical out from this into this, the transmitter, then optical out from that to the sound bar. And then in the rear of the room, we have the receiver down here, plugged into the wall, one speaker over here in the chair, one speaker sitting over here on this case. It may not look particularly 
optimal or desirable at some point if I like it enough maybe I'll figure out a way to like mount them up here I could like wall mount that unit like in here or something and then just kind of staple or otherwise connect somehow the cables to the wall so they stay out of the way and then just put them up in the corners on there kitty's uh he's got a new, he found one of his his toys and he wants me to play with them so I'm gonna do that for a minute and I will be back and we'll see how this thing works all right so it kind of works and it kind of doesn't uh, depending on what encoder you use you can either get it seems like either it all comes to the sound bar or some of it actually does make to the back two channels like it should and individually because this is done over SPDIF uh, the optical it seems like it won't let me test individual channels because it considers that a speaker setting if that makes any sense so like I can go in here and play with all this stuff I want and it doesn't do anything so you can't hear anything but if I go ahead and do the properties on this, on the uh, SPDIF out, uh, I can do either Dolby or DTS. DTS seems like it all comes through the front. Dolby actually seems to go through and do, do things correctly. And then I'll show you this. Uh, this is a Dolby Atmos test file I had downloaded uh, to try it on my PC when I hooked up to my Atmos soundbar before. But we can use it for this purpose too. And it seems to work correctly sending audio channels to the back or to the front you know, as it should. So like, here's DTS. Now I don't know how well you can tell like through the microphone, uh, you know, how that sounds like positionally speaking, but all that came through the front. Now if I go to Dolby Digital and test that, now with any luck you heard that, the last two channels came through the back two speakers like they should have, so they did sound correct. Also, for some reason, the back ones are louder. Um, I can play around with the audio, though, directly of the sound bar using its remote, and that should probably help. So there is a remote that comes with this thing I forgot to mention. So you've got, uh, you know, just the power button, the mute button. You can change the source between optical and auxiliary, uh, depending on how you connected it. Uh, and then you can change it from stereo to sound mode, uh, stereo to surround sound. I haven't noticed that those buttons do anything. It's like it's the same either way. Uh, the volume up or the volume down uh, controls, um, you know, the, the master uh, transmitter there as to how much that's going to do. Uh, and then these delay buttons, I don't really know what they do. It doesn't seem like it does anything. It seems like that would have some effect on how, you know, you hear the signal through the, the rear channels, but it doesn't seem like it does anything, so I don't know. But you can see that those work. So this is, like I said, this Dolby uh, Dolby Digital or sorry, Dolby Atmos sound test, but I think it's just doing it in Dolby 5.1. Let me see real quick. I don't think I can tell it what kind of a track to use. This is an older version of Power DVD, so. All right. And sorry, like, again, I'm using my tablet to record this, and for some reason the autofocus on it is crappy. Alright, so you get the general idea that, uh, hold on, I don't know, I hit some kind of autofocus button, see if that helped. Uh, anyways, I don't know how well that translates again through my microphone, but it did sound like, you know, leaves and things were blowing around me in a kind of a circular pattern, as the video would indicate that it should. So that video being encoded with, uh, you know, Dolby Digital and then Dolby Atmos, does work correctly so depending on the audio file that you're playing or in the case of like if you have a blu-ray player I, this would probably work a lot better with a blu-ray player or even like um like an xbox or a playstation 4 because they uh it seems like they're just set up correctly to encode these kinds of audio formats as opposed to in windows where you can play with around, around with a lot of settings and some of it does work and some of it doesn't work but let me try a game real quick uh, i'll see if like red dead works or something like that and then that should be a good enough test uh, i'll be right back I don't know if you can hear that very well or not, but it does it does seem to be working. I configured the speaker layout in the game. It gives you options on setting like how far apart speakers are from each other, like narrow or wide setups. But you can hear it's different from the front to the back, like from the front channels to the back channels. Up front, like I'm hearing birds chirping. In the back, I can hear rain falling. So it's working. 
Let me load up the actual game here. For some reason though, the game is like taking a while to load now. I don't know if that's... Whatever. This game is a really buggy mess. They still haven't fixed a bunch of shit in it. So, uh, whatever. Give me a second here, and we'll see how the actual game does. I don't really know what happened. I was in the middle of talking and recording, and, uh... My, my tablet just closed out the camera app with no error or anything like that. Sort of weird. But, uh, I think you guys get the general idea. Like I say, um, my general recommendation would probably be it would be better with a console or a like a, a, a Blu-ray player uh, or like a Roku or something. But that said, if you guys have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. Appreciate people watching the video. If you could, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, maybe subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Tomorrow I'll be doing a, well, I'll be wall mounting a TV. So uh, that said, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and happy new year if uh, I don't see you guys before then, if, uh, if you haven't come back to the channel since then. But have a great holiday. Later. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.